Hi, Imran. Thank you so much for joining us um, today. You are the CEO of Verishop. And for our audience who might not know, can you explain what is Verishop? What do you guys do? Yes, and first of all, thank you for having me. And my heart goes out to everyone uh, who has been infected by this terrible virus. Uh, so what Verishop is, Verishop is your brand and product discovery platform. We are a virtual shopping mall that we are building uh, where you can go find all your favorite brands and discover new cool brands. Uh, and what our team has done, they went all over the world uh, and all across the country and found really a lot of exciting, new exciting brands in fashion, home, beauty uh, categories, as well as the brands that you know. Wow, that, so you are based basically all online. All online. Interesting, so I, I'm interested to know in how you know, the current state of the world has impacted Verishop then. What have you seen, um, what are your consumers doing, and how have you dealt with that? Yeah, you know, I think we have been lucky because our business is 100% online, so it has not been impacted by physical store closures. Uh, uh, and, but we, see, we saw some really interesting changes in consumer behavior. For example, if you look at our business, our home category month over month is up 158% on a month over month basis. If you look at our beauty and wellness category is up 107% month over month. At the same time, we saw fashion like men and women fashion is down 16 and 17% respectively. So we're seeing that how consumer spend has been changing. People are spending more time in home, so they're buying cookware. So for example, cookware uh, is up 180% month over month. We're also seeing that traffic from metro cities has, has been down, but in the suburbs has been up significantly. Interesting. I mean, it makes sense. Like you said, people are home cooking more, you know, now more than ever before. And I, I can understand why fashion might be taking a backseat. What about um, any of like your kind of loungewear, luxury pajama brands that you work with? Is that seeing an uptick at all? Yes. You know, loungewear, you know, uh, like we have this exciting brand called Let. Uh, the founder of the Let brand actually came from Reformation. She has done a really good job building this brand. and. Uh, we have seen very strong growth from let uh, in on our site. Uh, we're also seeing uh, strong growth in other loungewear product also. Uh, so yes, we are seeing that. Uh, but you know, I think those growths were offset by other fashion categories uh, in the marketplace. Yeah. Speaking of some of these brands that you work with, have any of them been you know extremely impacted by what's going on? And if so, how have you dealt with that? Yeah, those brands have been impacted and, you know, we have been trying to work with these brands, uh, you know, as closely as possible. You know, we are a small business. Uh, we have been uh, live for only for nine months. Uh, so with our limited resources, we have been trying to help as much as we can. And, you know, uh, my wife and I co-founded the company and uh, we personally has been also trying to help. Like we just announced this morning, we donated $100,000 to LA Food Bank to support you know, uh, the people who have been furloughed or laid off you know, for, to those families. So we have been trying to do personally and to our company to work with this brand as much as we can. That's incredible. Thank you guys for doing that. I know that that's, you know, it's extremely good to hear um, when, we, when we get to work with customers and brands like Verishop that are, that are doing their part to give back. Um, and that, you know, that kind of brings me to how are you managing cash flow? How are you maintaining business and making sure that you know things are running as smoothly as possible, po possibly right now, um, given you know the circumstances? Yeah, I think you know time like this. This is the third recessions I have been going through in my life, and one thing I learned during these recessions: you have to pay highest attention to cash flow. You know, in, in any business, cash flow matters. Ultimately, that's the single most important thing you have to care about. Uh, it's not revenue, it's not profit, it's cash flow. And, uh, but during this time, you have to pay even more attention. So uh, for example, we have this daily meeting. Every day, I have meeting with my finance team to look at the cash flow. You know, uh, so we look at the cash flow very, very closely, you know, trying to really invest in areas that will drive 10x value creation and things that are nice to have not really spend money on those things you know uh so that's what we're really focused on what what areas are you cutting down in 
Uh, so look, I think one of the most interesting thing is that you know we cut a lot of spending on travel, for example. People don't need to travel, so we we cut a lot of budget on T and E. Uh, you know, I think we were able to you know in Santa Monica, parking is very very expensive. We were able to save money on the parking side. Uh, the thing, the other area is like we have to push out some of our uh, uh, you know investment. You know. You know, further out, you know, we have to look at all the investments that we're going to make, you know, this year. And we came up with, you know, ranking system. We rank them through P0, which is like has to be done. And then P1, P2, P3, P4. And we really manage the business that way and, and really focus on what is P0 and P1 right now for us. Priority zero and priority one right now. And just letting, getting those things done. So, and that kind of bodes the next question being, um, where are you investing more of your time, money, resources into um, right now? Like you had said earlier, that you're focusing on certain areas where you know you can grow 10x. Um, what are those areas? Yeah, so I think I would point that in uh, three buckets. So first one is technology. You know, I think, you know, my background is technology that's I've been doing for last 19 years and we are investing in technology. I think, you know, if you look at an e-commerce, what's missing is discovery. You know, Amazon is effectively a search engine. And you, if you know exactly what you want, you go search there. But what's really important when you are trying to look in categories like fashion, home, beauty, electronics, you want to discover new products, you know. And there are so many amazing brands that are now building this incredible product. The discovering is to happen. So what we have done, one, and we got a lot of these discovery brands on our platform. 30% of our revenue now coming from discovery brands. But what we want to do, we want to bring more discovery brands, but to support those discovery brands, we need to build this discovery engine in our platform. How do you, dis like how do you, di the way you discover great content on Instagram, the way you in discover content on Pinterest, we need that in commerce. So we are investing on that. You know, we hired some great engineers, so we continue to invest in our engineering team, and that's some of the you know, you know, innovative initiative you will see later this year. The second big uh, area that we really focus on, how can we expand our selections? You know, we now have around 500 brands on our site. We want to have increased this number by 60% in next six months. So our team is really, really focused on expanding selection so that you can find a lot of new kind of product on our platform. So we're really, really investing on that. And then the third area that we are really, really investing is that we are finding a lot of small brands you know, they don't have the skill set of doing logistics, doing infrastructure services that they need to support their growing business. So we want to bring, you know, those kind of services to the merchants, to the brands, so that they can leverage our infrastructure to grow their business in addition to driving additional demand. So we are investing on that. So we're launching a service called Fulfillment by Varisha, where if you are a small business and you are building great fashion product or great home product or great beauty product, we will do your fulfillment and logistics for your for your website so and uh, this all sounds amazing obviously but is any of this being impacted right now or are you finding participation from these small businesses and these various brands are you able to are you going to be able to grow you know to grow your brand base by that that extreme amount with everything going on right now i think this is that difficult time brands need more help and, okay. and I think we want to be there. You know, I think we want to build a business that we want to be there for consumers and we want to be there for our merchants. You know, for consumers, we guarantee the best price, right? If you buy today and in 30 days you find a cheaper product, just give us an email or text or call, whatever is easier. For 30 days, we're guaranteeing you the best price in addition to the quality of the product and the discovery, all those things. So that's, and the same thing for the brands. You know, we want to help the brands to grow. So that doesn't mean only driving more revenue for them but also help them doing their job how can we help them doing their logistics how can we, you know by doing so they can do better job of building better product which we can bring it to our customers so you haven't seen any of those brands pull out thus far they're utilizing you as kind of like this is this is what's helping them get a, at least a little bit of gain a little bit of traction get a little bit of success right now I, I, we have not seen pull up, pullback from the brand side, but obviously we saw pullback from consumers on the fashion side. You know, right. we have not seen impacted like that. Uh, but again, I think the consumers are, you know, uh, rightfully so, you know, 
focus on areas that matters the most, like wellness and beauty and cooking and things like that. And we are trying to make sure that we have those breadth of services for them. Like I'll give you a perfect example. We just went live with a direct to consumer brand, a very small brand uh, called Year and Day. You know, it's, uh, if you're on Instagram, you will see that it's an Instagram brand. They've done a really good job. They have a really good product. We just brought them live and, and we're, we're seeing you know, strong growth from year and day brand. Uh, so if, I would appreciate everybody check it out. It's a great, great home, uh, home, home like cookware, you know, uh, uh, tabletop products. Well, that's good to, that's good to hear. And in terms of like the supply chain side, are you seeing any delays? Are you still able to get these products into consumers' hands as quickly as possible? Or have you had to do any type of, you know, external communication to be like, Hey, you know, we'll get this to you. Things might be slowed down in X, Y, and Z, or are you just kind of moving, moving smoothly? Uh, So far we have been incredibly lucky. Uh, And, uh, so we have been uh, keeping our shop shipping promise. You know, one of the thing we have been very focused on very shop is free one day shipping. We are now have the fastest free shipping in the marketplace. So, so far we have been incredibly lucky to do so. Uh, this is a fluid environment. It can change anytime. Uh, we're keeping a very close eye on it, but you know, for us it's safety fast, safety first. Uh, and uh, so we, everybody is doing social distancing and we have, uh, uh, we're working with our warehouse partners to have uh, better secure, better safety process built into the system and, and monitoring uh, everybody's health, you know, encouraging people if they're not feeling well, working from home, all those kind of things. Uh, but so, so far we've been lucky. Our partners have been really working hard. Everybody's working really hard because we want consumers to get the product they need. Primarily when they cannot get out of the home, we want to make their life easy. And that is what we are really focused on. Yeah, definitely. Um, in terms of external and internal communication, how are you handling, let's start with internal, with the employees that you have working remote or working in these warehouses, how are you managing communication around everything that's going on right now? Yes, that's a great question. And I think this is something I uh, uh, think a lot as a CEO, because communication is a challenge in a regular business environment, right? You know, one of the biggest challenges that I've seen in career that come in my, in my professional life, that in, in a company, teams don't talk to each other. And, 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 and there's a lot of investment goes through, how can you get your team engaged, you know, and, 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 and in an environment like that, this is even, even more challenging. Uh, uh, and, and it's even, even bigger challenge for companies like us, which is a smaller company and with a, you know, smaller, shorter history. Right, we have been in the business for a year or so. So right. one of the things we have been doing is is really, you know, uh, doing this virtual town hall on a regular basis. You know, every week we have every Friday we have a virtual town hall where everybody dials in uh, from uh, from everywhere, and 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 we talk about what we are seeing. We also uh, uh, having uh, more regular conversation through Slack channels. Uh, Every group is having regular meetings, you know, uh, you know, so one of the things that I, I urge to my team is over communicate, you know, in a time like that, over communication will not hurt you. So, so that's, I'm um, keep continuing to encouraging them. And, and, and then on a regular basis, I'm checking on, you know, so one of my colleagues is, uh, his family is from Brazil. I checked in out with him yesterday and just have a normal social conversation. You know, we didn't have to talk about business. We talked for 15 minutes about life. And, and, and I think that's important to bring people together because those water cooler moments are missing now. Yeah, that is so true, especially right now where your people are feeling, you know, uh, obviously more distance than ever and more alone than ever, you know, having these types of one-on-one conversations that are outside of work make, you know, make a world of difference. Right. Um, have you had to do any layoffs or furloughs due to this? Uh, yeah, we had to, unfortunately, had to make a small adjustment. Uh, you know, it's, it's a difficult time. Uh, but we had to make a small adjustment. I think that my biggest concern was, you know, making sure that we take care of everybody's, uh, uh, you know, uh, health stuff. So obviously we extended the healthcare as long as we could as a small. And how did you go about having those communications? Was it, you know, super personal? Did you have to do this virtually? And any advice you would give to any other, you know, business leader who's having to go through something similar? I think you have to do this conversation one at a time. You know, because these are very personal conversation and uh, you have to do it in parts uh, like ha- has to be one on one conversation. And that's that's what we try to do. 
Yeah, great, great insight there. Um, as far as external communication, how are you mar- going about marketing right now? Are you marketing? Are you still taking advantage of, you know, advertising across social media? Um, you know, you touched a little bit on some of the Facebook and Instagram stuff earlier, but have you slowed that down or are you still kind of going about business as usual? And if so, how have you had to change your, your advertising um, to fit the state of the world right now? I think, um, so we slowed down our advertising. You know, our advertising budget is down month over month and it's down significantly from January. Uh, uh, I think what we're really trying to do is be part of the conversation, you know, and I think this is the time that, you know, we want to be part uh, on the side of our customers, you know, and our partners. And so what we're trying to do is be part of the conversation. So, for example, this morning we published a blog to talk about what we're seeing in our business, you know, Uh, uh, so, so things like that. So we're going to go do regularly publish those kind of blogs uh, to talk about what we're seeing in our business, what we're seeing in the world. You know, we recently did a poll um, in uh, Instagram asking people, you know, are they are um, uh, productive working from home this week? You know, and great inter- insight. We found 65% of the people said they are productive from home, you know, and then if you double click on this data, you find that based on the sector you are in, some people are more productive and some category sectors are not productive at all. So, so what we're trying to do, you know, one of the things that we're very, very fortunate about, we're an online business and we have an online one-to-one relationship with our customers. We know who our customers are and we're really trying to understand, you know, how, uh, insights from them, how their life, how their psyche, how their spending behavior, what are the kind of things that are exciting them and sharing those things and be part of this global conversation, you know, and I think more than ever, we need to be in a conversation because yes, we are maintaining social distance. The worst thing we can do is not communicate with each other. So we want to be part of this conversation, this global communications. Yeah, definitely. So, so when you're doing these blogs or, you know, these Instagram polls or what have you, you're more being part of the conversation in general working from home stuff, business, you know, small business advice, stuff like that, rather than kind of saying, Hey, we have cookware that you can use when you're working from home, or we have this loungewear set that you can use when you're working from home. Instead, you're focused on what everybody's talking about rather than selling the product. Yeah, look, we do have some advertising. I, I want to say that we've stopped all advertising, but, but I think, I think it's, it's more than important other than, you know, it's, it's all about communication. I think, you know, everybody is isolated. And when you're isolated, it's, I'm a very social person. I like talking to people. I like going to social places. So I think it's important that we are more involved in this global conversations, be part of the conversation, keep uh, content that, that's engaging to our, our, consu- our, our customers and our partners. Yeah. Um, where do you see, w- with all of this, where do you see e-commerce headed um, following how crazy the world has changed right now? Um, where, do, where do you see, and, and how do you remain unique? How do you stand out among the others? How does Bear Shop become the, the, the you know, site that everybody goes to to shop rather than some of these other big brands that are doing some similar things? Yeah, so I, I'll take the second question. I think the first thing is our, our promise to our customers are four things. Number one, we will help them discover new brand and new product. You know, I think we are all want to look individual and feel different than others, primarily in the world of the social media. And we are a place where you can discover new brand and new product, where you can express your individualism. So that's, I, as I said, 35% of our revenue coming from the brands and product that you never heard. We have brands from all over the world, all over the country. So that's number one. Second is, if we want to get the product at the most convenience. So we have the fastest free shipping, free one day shipping, free return, 24 seven customer support. We actually publish our customer support numbers on our homepage on the top of the page. You know, I, I don't think any companies do that. Uh, the third is, you know, I think the internet, one of the biggest problem with internet is that, that over the last 20 years, internet is losing trust. There's a lot of fake news on social media. There is a lot of fake products in big, big e-commerce companies. And you often get a lot of product, primarily when you buy product that requires, uh, you know, uh, requires some standard. So we, everything we buy, we source from the brands directly. So there's a quality. The other thing is we really, really stand for the quality that people care about, the wellness, the clean beauty product. We have a store like sustainable store inside our stores, things like that. And then the fourth is you should never pay 
more money for quality and convenience and discovery. So we always guarantee the best price, you know. Uh, so that's, that's, I think that's how we're trying to differentiate. Uh, in terms of e-commerce, look, I think, you know, even before this crisis, e-commerce was only 11% of overall uh, consumer spending. Uh, I think that number gonna, going to be 50% in next decade or so. And so I'm a big believer of e-commerce. I think that will continue to go. I think people will realize that, you know, shopping is so easy and primarily if it's returning is easy, why not just do it at your convenience? And so I, I'm a big believer of e-commerce and I think it will continue to grow regardless of this virus or not. I love that insight. Thank you. Um, to kind of round things out here, you know, almost everyone has a business continuity plan. Almost none of them will be sufficient for something like this. What part of disaster preparedness plans are actually helpful here? And did you have some plans in place? You said you've been through three recessions thus far. So did you kind of have a plan in place for something at least similar to this? Or, or has this been kind of out of left field? It is completely out of left field. You know? So this is, you know, I think every recession that I went through, they were very different. And this is completely different. You know, I, I have not seen a pandemic in my lifetime at this scale. Uh, at least I can think about. Uh, so I don't think anybody has seen something like that. This came completely uh, outfelt. But, you know, look, we're learning. You know, I think one of the greatest thing about uh, Americans and that one of the greatest thing about, uh, about human being is that we're very resilient and, and we learn from our mistakes. We learn from our experience and, and we're learning uh, uh, and, 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 and we're adapting. So will you do anything different moving forward, having gone through something like this now? No, I think, you know, one thing that I always said that you always have to have a strong balance sheet, you know, and I think I want to continue to stay focused on it because things like that will come from out of field, uh, you know, and that, and we just need to make sure we have a strong balance sheet. And then I think more than ever, we need to be focused on customers, you know, customers, customers, customers. How can we make sure we make your life easy? How can you help you find better product? How can you find, help you discover new product? That's, we need to be focused on it. I think we have a lot of work to do. As we said, we only have 500 brands. I want to be in a world that we have 50,000 brands and we make it easier for you to discover brands rather than searching for it. So we have a lot of work to do and just got to stay focused on it. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this call today. And, you know, we look forward to everything that Verishop has to offer in the future. And, you know, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. You too. Social distancing.